Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. I'm not sure Tyson Fury could have come across any better. He delivered, in my view, one of the best long-form boxing interviews I've seen in quite some time, and this was, of course, on the Joe Rogan experience. It was honest, it was raw, engaging. He showed a vulnerable side of himself that is seldom seen. And I'm sure it will endear more boxing fans to the Furious One and potentially attract some more interest to his upcoming pay-per-view event with Deontay Wilder on December the 1st in Los Angeles. After all, this is in part the reason he sat down with Joe Rogan to try tap into Rogan's subscriber base of almost 4 million people. So what I'll do is I'll briefly cover some of the different themes, hit the high notes, go through some of the statements that emerged during the interview, and I'll splice in some thoughts along the way. Buckle in. Let's go. Fury's recovery, both mental and physical, was a prominent part of this interview, especially the first half. Fury spoke of the dark times, the depression, the hopelessness that he felt, and that when he was at his lowest... He was at one point down on his knees praying, tears running down his chest, and he made the decision to become a champion again, turn his life around, overcome his mental health issues. And he spoke of now having a bigger purpose than just boxing, saying, my calling is to spread the word of the silent killer. I know the secret for me, train every day. Be happy with what you've got today. Think what makes you happy and do it. If something makes you unhappy, don't do it. Set yourself goals, long-term goals. The way to beat mental health is setting long-term goals. I don't suffer mental health when I'm active and have goals. If I exhaust myself in the gym, I'm too tired to think about anything else when I come home. I didn't do it with doctors, I did it with God. And those were some of the statements that Tyson Fury made in the early going of the interview. And it felt like I was seeing the real Tyson Fury, not just the trash talker who calls people bums or dosses. It didn't feel like there was any gimmicks. There was no BS from Fury. There was no mask. He wasn't fronting. He was just, you know, it was very honest and genuine. And he said with his determination to come back came the change of lifestyle. And Fury sort of outlined during the dark times, it revolved around drinking a lot of lager, sometimes 18 beers at a time, followed by other spirits and bad food along the way. And he said all that just had to go, and he embarked on a low-carb diet to shift what he said was about 160 pounds, saying that he ballooned up to just over 400 pounds at his peak. And one of the issues that Joe Rogan, in terms of the when Fury was making his comeback that Rogan didn't really press him on was the change of trainer. More specifically, was there any bad blood between Fury and his uncle Peter? Fury characterized the situation as there was no vibe in the gym, he didn't want to be there, he had no motivation to be there. He knew he needed a new team for motivation, to start fresh, more positivity, and to stop doing the same stuff day in, day out. He just needed change. He knew that for his comeback, things had to change. They couldn't stay the same. And he actually went on to sort of explain how he linked up with Ben Davison. And Davison was in Marbella with Fury and Billy Joe Saunders, who Davison had worked for for a couple of years on and off. So he actually challenged Davison to go up to a couple of hot girls and get their number. And he said, Davison, he didn't succeed the first try, but Fury sort of, you know, sort of said to him, you know, you can be my trainer if you can do that. So he persevered, went back out, he came back with the numbers and Fury said, you know, Davison showed that he had minerals and he had the confidence to go out there, get the job done. And he says, bringing on Davison on board, it was the best decision that he ever made. And he believes that Davison will win Ring Magazine Trainer of the Year if he does beat Deontay Wilder. Let's segue into the training side of things. Fury talked about road work, pad work, and sparring being the most important boxing training. He said he liked sparring hundreds of rounds, especially to help get in shape. He said it was something that James Tony used to do. But he stated he was very wary of overtraining, something he'd done before, didn't like. He said he already trains hard, he doesn't need to train harder for the Deontay Wilder fight. 
And he said, Ben Davison knows that's the case. He said, I don't want to leave it in the gym. I want to leave it in the ring. And he said, you can't do anything when you overtrain. And then he went on to reveal, and I sort of thought, this is quite a hefty workload, that he does strength and conditioning five times a week. He runs three days a week and boxing training six days a week. But I guess that is the life of an elite professional athlete. And he added that he'd rather be fat than look like an Adonis and get knocked out in five rounds. In respect of Deontay Wilder, so we'll move on to that now. Um, Some of the general comments. He sort of credits Wilder for providing motivation for his comeback, saying that a comment Wilder had made in 2017 about the state Fury was in, it was a partial driver to, you know, give him motivation to come back. And also Wilder's comments about being able to knock Mike Tyson out, a guy who's not even in Wilder's generation. He said he felt that was deeply disrespectful and that was also motivation for Fury. But he also made it clear he was the one that wanted this fight made, saying, I've picked Deontay Wilder. He didn't pick me. It's got to be more than about money. We owe it to the fans. And he went on to say that Deontay Wilder's people were the fairest and straight going people that they've ever dealt with. And he had credit and respect for Deontay Wilder for wanting to prove that he's the best. And Joe Rogan went on to raise the point that Wilder needed this fight as he hadn't captured the American public's imagination. That he should be a huge star and maybe this fight was a big moment for Wilder. And Fury, he responded quite diplomatically and deflected on that to some extent, saying the heavyweight division has been in Europe for the past 15 years. And he said even the biggest fight of his career was a 12-round snooze fest. He actually said that. But he backed himself against Wilder and he explained how there was a stigma about European fighters and that they were considered to be stiff. And he said he wanted to have the conditioning of a European fighter but the American style, and he felt that he did have the best of both worlds, as he put it. And Fury, he welcomed Wilder's height, saying he competes better against taller fighters, saying, the taller, the better for me. I seem to be able to move better. And he said, Deontay Wilder is a one-trick pony. I don't need to do anything different to beat him. If I let Wilder hit me with one of those big punches from the back of the hall, I deserve to be knocked out. And he sort of said, you know, if that happened, he would welcome being knocked out. And he said, if I can use Deontay Wilder's greatest asset against him, I've won. If he can't land that punch, he loses every round. And I think many people would agree with that. Uh, Well, maybe he won't lose every round, but you'd have to think that Tyson Fury, being a very good technical boxer, potentially, if this fight goes deep, he'll be quite far up on the cards by that point. But, you know, this is boxing, who knows? But I think most fight fans do see that two-way scenario. Either Fury wins wide on the cards on points, or Deontay Wilder knocks him out at some point. Even Wilder himself has been stating that he thinks he'll knock Tyson Fury out in the latter part of their fight. I guess predictably, Anthony Joshua's name had came up a couple of times in the interview, Rogan asking Fury, Would he fight Joshua next if he beat Wilder? And he stated, well, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And he added that he would let Deontay Wilder go off and face Anthony Joshua if Wilder lost to him. What a guy. Um, Also, in the earlier part of the interview, he referenced the two-fight offer made by Deontay Wilder to Anthony Joshua, saying Wilder's team offered $80 million for a two-fight deal, and that Joshua's team declined it. And he claimed that... His own lawyer, so this is Tyson Fury's own lawyer, had seen the proof of funds. And he went on to say that the reason Joshua isn't fighting Wilder is clearly it's about money. He said, keeping the golden goose making money, why would you want him getting beat? I don't blame them. It's a business at the end of the day. But Fury, he did acknowledge that Joshua showed a champion's heart to get through against Klitschko, albeit by the skin of his teeth. But all in all, Very fascinating interview with Tyson Fury on the Joe Rogan experience. I do recommend that you check it out. Thoroughly enjoyable. Some good insight into Tyson Fury, his demons, his thoughts on Wilder. Um, Perhaps he wasn't maybe as as sort of explicit as some might have expected, but it was just as entertaining. Certainly a good advert for him, and by default, the fight. What did you make of it all? What do you make of it all? Drop a comment. 
loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.